Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show how to find the GCD of two polynomials. GCD means the greatest common divisor. It's pretty similar to the GCD we talked about comparing two numbers and finding out the greatest number that divides the given two numbers. Instead of numbers, we have polynomials, okay? So let's say uh, polynomial P of X is just X square, right? Polynomial Q of X is say um, X cube, okay? So what is the GCD of these two polynomials? GCD is a, another polynomial that must divide both P and Q. Okay, for example, you could say yeah, X is a divisor of both P and Q, right? X divides P of X and the X also divides Q of X. But X itself is not a greatest common divisor because uh, we can also argue X square divides P of X. X square also divides Q of X. Now, what about X cube? No, X cube can't be because X cube doesn't divide X square. So we can't uh, go more than degree two. So the degree of the resulting polynomial, the GCD, has to be at most the smallest degree of the given two polynomials, okay? To summarize, GCD of two polynomials is another polynomial which will divide the given two polynomials, but the GCD must have the highest degree, okay? So in a Galois field, the polynomials coefficients are either zero or one, that's all, okay? So how do we uh, program this? It turned out that this is a really nice property. You could use the same algorithm that we have used for computing GCD of two numbers. Uh, reminder function instead of the percentage that we use for computing the uh, reminder of two numbers. If you were treating P and Q as regular numbers, we will be using a percentage operator. Percentage means mod operator. So in the case of polynomials, we will have we will have to plug in a reminder function. So if you are writing a very generic GCD function, it should take a third argument, the rem function. I will show you um, my algorithm. We can talk about it quickly. I didn't uh, make it general enough. If you were to make it general enough, what you will do is you will pass this as an argument to the function, right? The third argument. And then you can use the same algorithm for computing GCD of two numbers or GCD of two polynomials, okay? Just to make it clear, I wanted to show to you the algorithm uh, without the third argument, okay? The third argument would have been more flexible. So we can use the same function for numbers as well as for polynomials, okay? Anyway, so the story goes as follows. You take A to be P, B to be Q. Uh, this is more or less like a recursion implemented in a while loop. GF of two rem means the reminder of dividing A by B. We talked about polynomial division and reminder. And that becomes your uh, C. And then you treat A to be B, B to be C. You continue this loop until your B becomes zero, which will become zero. We proved it all earlier when we talked about integer model arithmetic based GCD calculation. Same argument holds true here as well with polynomials. Okay, so I don't have to go into the proof of this algorithm because it's the same proof we can reuse from numbers. But that's basically it. This is such a nice algorithm. Uh, there are better algorithms faster, but for our purpose, this is this is good enough. All right, let's do a quick demo of this code. From my numutils import star, I'll create two polynomials, okay, P and Q. P will be x cubed, that means I will be using set bit routine. Third position will be set. For Q, the second position will be set. So what are we trying to achieve now? We want GCD of these two polynomials. So our common sense is telling us that x cubed, GCD with x squared will be x squared. So let's check that. Let's say the resulting polynomial, we have to compute GCD of two in Kaluba field, uh, become a cube, okay. So we got four. If you think about four in terms of binary, which is one zero zero. And if you are to write it in polynomial, this is nothing but x square. This is x power zero, x power one, x square, which makes complete sense because x square divides x square, x square also divides x cube. So we get the correct polynomial as a GCD. Okay. You may wonder the fact that I'm representing polynomials as integers, why not use the regular GCD function? I'll show you why that should not be the case. Okay. Let's try this now. So I'm going to create uh, two polynomials again and to show to you that computing GCD of two polynomials is different from computing GCD of two numbers, okay? Create a polynomial P to be X square plus one, okay? Uh, X square means second position, plus one means the zeroth position, right? So P is set and the Q is, let's take Q to be X plus one, okay? 
first position and zeroth position. Now, if you take GCD of uh, these two numbers as polynomials, you get three, which is nothing but x plus one. Okay, let me show you why it makes sense. So this is x square, right? This is uh, x square and we're adding it with one. So this is polynomial P. Okay, what about polynomial Q is x plus one. So the result is three, three is zero, one, one, which means x plus one, right? Three means zero, one, one in binary. That means you're setting the first position of the zeroth position. So naturally we can see that this can be written as x plus one square in Galois field. Remember in Galois field, this is true because two times x will be canceled out. That is the reason why these two are equal. And now we can clearly see that this is x plus one square, this is x plus one. Therefore, we can say x plus one is the GCD, okay? Now, if you use the regular GCD algorithm by passing P and Q as regular integers rather than polynomial representation, we will see that we will not get three, okay? Meaning we will not get uh, x plus one, okay? So let's try that. We will also check that that assumption is correct or wrong. Okay, so if you, if you treat this as regular number, what is this number? Uh, the second position is set and the zeroth position is set, right? Which means this is second position means four in terms of eight. So this becomes number five, right? Remember this is second position that means four and then the first position is set five and this is three, right? Because the Second position, uh, the, uh, one means weight of uh, two, zero means weight of one. So we add it, get three. If you take GCD of P and DQ, you will get three if you treat this as numbers, okay? So let's do that. So what is GCD of P and Q? You get one. So you can't use, you can't use the regular GCD algorithm to compute um, the GCD of two polynomials. Okay, this may come across like contradiction. What I said earlier is that you can reuse the same structure, but then you have to define the meaning of the reminder more specifically for Galois field. That is the reason I said, if you replace the reminder by the mod operation, the regular mod in the numbers, then you get the regular algorithm. Okay, all right, that's basically it. So we now know how to compute the GCD of uh, two polynomials. We can use this for computing inverses and so on later. But at this point, I wanted to show to you that the regular uh, Euclidean algorithm can be used um, to compute the GCD of two polynomials. You have to just define the meaning of the reminder function using GF2 reminder algorithm that we talked about in the previous segment. That's it, thank you very much.